Johnstown, Pennsylvania, lies in the heart of the Allegheny Mountains. This 200-year-old town is a place of many stories, but the most famous and the most tragic is that of the Great Flood of 1889. Well, Johnstown was a sort of backwoods trading center uh, when it was founded in 1800. Boomed when the Pennsylvania Canal came through in the 1830s, and then 20 years later when the Pennsylvania Railroad came through. And it's a matter of decades. It had gone, you know, from kind of a frontier outpost to one of the leading steel centers in the world. As industry grew, so did the town. Approximately 30,000 people resided in the area in 1889. Its location was a major reason for its success. There are three major rivers around the Johnstown area. You have the Little Connemaw River, and you have the Stony Creek River. And these two rivers merge to form the Connemaw River itself. These rivers have provided what was necessary for the industries that were here, and these rivers helped put the town on the map. The rivers also provided mass transportation and helped create the Pennsylvania mainline canal system. By 1834, you had this wonderfully ambitious system that went basically from Pittsburgh uh, to Philadelphia by a combination of narrow gauge railroad and traditional canals. One problem with this system was a lack of water during the summer months. To ensure maximum mobility, the answer was to build a dam that would hold a reservoir of water to be channeled into the canals. The site chosen was 14 miles east of and 410 feet above Johnstown. Construction began on the South Fork Dam in 1838. It was made of puddled earth and what that means is they would just make a layer of earth, dirt and rock. Water would be added to make it airtight and watertight. The center of the embankment consisted of slate, stones, and more earth. The downstream portion was built up mostly of rocks, weighing up to 10 tons. It had, we believe, uh, certainly one spillway, but we think it had a second emergency spillway. It had uh, pipes running underneath it, a culvert, that allowed the operator of the dam to actually drain it uh, if there was an emergency. Taking 14 years to complete, the dam stood 72 feet high, 918 feet across, 10 feet thick at the top, and 220 feet thick at its base. It seemed impenetrable. But one of the many ironies in the timeline of the Johnstown flood story was that the western reservoir of the Pennsylvania Mainline Canal was finished just in time for canals to go out of business. The railroads had taken over as the preferred source of transportation. With no need for a reservoir, the dam stood in neglect for the next 27 years. In 1862, a heavy storm caused a collapse in the center portion of the dam, which destroyed the stone culvert. The marred structure sat until 1879, when industrialist Benjamin Ruff bought the land and created the exclusive South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club. Ruff, uh, who had worked for the railroad, hired some workmen and came up here and began to rebuild the dam. They had no engineer working on the project, and, and it was really just a, a construction gang, a railroad construction gang. Built like a railroad embankment, the dam was eventually repaired. But puddled clay was not used, and the culvert was not reinstalled. The old reservoir was now renamed Connemaw Lake. The South Fork Dam was really an accident waiting to happen. Uh, when it was reconstructed, there were several very serious engineering flaws, which uh, really totally set the stage for disaster. Along with no discharge system, one of the most damaging changes was the placement of mesh screens at the spillway, which prevented fish that had been imported for the club from escaping. The dam stood for close to another decade, until 1889.
the great storm of 1889 arrived. By the time people got up the next morning, on the morning of Friday, May 31st, many of the people in Johnstown saw that the streets in front of their homes were underwater. And it wasn't long before many of the streets in Johnstown actually resemble canals more than streets. The rivers surrounding Johnstown were overflowing. Connemaw Lake was taking on massive amounts of water in a very short period of time. Connemaw Lake would grow an estimated 30 to 33 percent larger than its normal size. Water was being dumped into the lake from the hills around it, as well as a lot of junk coming into the lake. Frantic efforts to stop water from flowing over the top of the dam were futile. The spillway's mesh screens were so choked with debris, they couldn't be removed. Water was rising about a foot an hour behind the dam. It was just a matter of time uh, until water started over the top. Many railway travelers and residents of the towns that lined the Little Connemaw River took to the hills. Those that didn't paid with their lives. They stood watching until about 10 minutes after 3 when the eroded dam just pushed away. And 20 million tons of water just leapt out of the reservoir and began a 14-mile descent on Johnstown. The flood wave ripped through the valley, decimating everything in its path. So what you almost had was a ball of water rolling down this narrow, sluice-like valley, and it pushed ahead of it everything, trees, houses, boulders. Uh, it pushed 80-ton locomotives as far as a mile, snapped off three-foot diameter hardwood trees. Reportedly reaching heights of up to 50 feet, the wall hit downtown, severing buildings from their foundations. And as the flood came into town, it broke into three directions, and you had three tidal waves come crashing into Johnstown. Residents were floating on their rooftops, hoping for an escape. It took only 10 minutes for the town to be wiped out. The once bustling Johnstown, proudly built on the backs of hard labor, was annihilated. An estimated 30 acres of debris, as deep as 40 feet, accumulated at the Stone Railroad Bridge on the edge of town. The wreckage contained coal, kerosene, and lime, which soon ignited and became a raging inferno. The fire burned for three and a half days. And as many as 80 people who survived the flood died in the funeral pyre at the Stone Bridge. The death toll from the Johnstown flood is recorded as 2,209. It was estimated about 20,000 were in areas that were actually hit by the flood. And so about one in 10 perished. But the town itself did not perish. The Johnstown flood started the first major civilian relief effort in American history. It's one of the most inspirational stories in American history. A new organization called the American Red Cross, led by founder Clara Barton, was on the scene in five days. During the next five months, the Red Cross began its journey towards the organization we know today. 25,000 people were homeless. They all needed to be fed and clothed. And for weeks, people were dependent on commissaries and living in tents or hovels, you know, constructed out of wreckage. With remarkable speed, Johnstown began to rebuild. Within six weeks, the mills were back in operation. Industry and the railroads had made commitments to rebuild. In Johnstown, their memorial was going to be a, a newer, bigger, better city. Victims blamed the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club, but the courts deemed the disaster an act of God. The survivors received no legal compensation. Today, the dam site is part of the Johnstown Flood National Memorial, run by the National Park Service. The area is once again used for recreation. But just 14 miles downriver, in the Grandview Cemetery, lie the bodies of 777 unidentified souls of the flood, victims of the dam's faulty engineering. <laughs>